Little Report. We are joined by COO Brad Rogers and CEO Mr. Alan Fisher. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I am doing fantastic. How are you guys? Great. Good. Good. Glad to have you here. Um, I know you guys just had uh, your monthly meeting, and how did that go? Uh, the monthly meeting went very well. We presented to the board our financials for the month. Uh, unfortunately, though, uh, we took a huge downturn, and our facility lost about 400000 for the month. How do you make up the difference? We are looking at different programs to, again, go out and do our community outreach on one hand, and then on the other hand, of course, we're looking at expenses and cutting those areas that we believe we could cut without hurting patient safety. Okay. That's uh, always a good thing. You know, it's never a good thing to be negative, but having a plan to recover those losses is always a good thing. Right. And I know Brad's always talking about how you guys are always trying to come up with different plans to bring that number back to at least zero. Right. We want to be proactive in our approach, not reactionary, because again, when you do that, then too many mistakes that occur. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, apart from uh, the financials, anything else happened at the meeting? What yeah, I mean, uh, kind of some exciting news. We've, we've had some personnel changes. And what I mean by that is additions of staff that we're really excited about. Um, we are adding, uh, and she'll be getting next week, uh, Aaron Bowser. Aaron Bowser is a uh, nurse um, who is going to be our wellness and, and nursing home coordinator. Um, so she'll be in charge of all that community wellness stuff we've been talking about, getting out into the community, helping with businesses, those kinds of things, and as well as our, our contracts and our relationship with our nursing facilities. Um, so very excited about that. And then from a, a marketing standpoint, you know, Alan said, hey, one of the things we do is got to get out and find out what we can do to help the community and, and get our services and our, our information out there. We have a new marketing director, uh, which we'll be getting uh, next month as well. Correct. And uh, her name is uh, Krista uh, Bouster, and extremely excited to bring her on board. Um, and then, you know, last but not least is um, we have our um, a new general surgeon, uh, Dr. Monser Hawk. Dr. Hawk uh, started with us a couple weeks ago. Um, you'll see him throughout the community here over the next couple months as he's doing some local work for us, some part-time stuff. And then he'll be on full-time starting December 17th. So we're really excited about that as well. So just another option so that uh, you can get your general surgery needs done right here in Rochester. And to cover all of those times where you just can't have one doctor cover 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Right. So now we'll have some assistance for Dr. Nile, and um, so they can manage an on-call schedule much nicer, and we'll have availability to this community all the time. Okay. So, very exciting. All right. Yeah, I know um, several years ago, when I say several months, it was uh, like 05, 06, mm -hmm. my, uh, my gallbladder erupted and uh, I had to wait until the following day to get anything done because Dr. Nile was booked. So having that extra person, it's definitely going to be beneficial for Will Bond. Absolutely. Great for the community. Great for the community. Yes. So um, congratulations on all the new staff. It's always a good thing to see growth. And that is one thing that Woodlawn has been continuing to do. Um, seems like monthly here lately as you guys continue to grow. and. Uh, I'm glad to hear that. I think that's a great thing for Rochester and Fulton, or Fulton County. Yes, yeah, so the growth. What what it is with the growth though? It's going to add not only growth to the facility, but growth to the community. And with our marketing director, we're excited that she'll be out there in the community, uh, working with various entities out there to help drive our business. Because again, we don't have the volumes, and that's where how we stay afloat with those volumes: increased surgeries, increased. Uh, patient stays and the more people know about us the more that those services are going to increase and that's what we're excited about having this individual the other individual Brad spoke of the one that's going to be working with our wellness plans we want to encourage businesses out there to contact us so we can work with them in developing wellness programs Brad? yeah absolutely our wellness programs um, you know something we did uh, a decade ago um, pretty well. Uh, we were in the communities doing things like flu shots at businesses and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, blood pressure checks and, and uh, boy, all kinds of things. Uh, we did programs on BMI and weight loss, diabetes, high blood pressure, those kinds of things. We are your resource uh, right. for that and we want to get back to doing those kinds of things. So Aaron's job will be 
building those relationships with the community businesses and leaders to determine what each individual company really needs mm -hmm. um, and then setting up a plan to work through that with them um, it's, it's something we've been doing a little bit on a smaller scale for a couple years with with a few companies that we're now going to bring out and get back to the whole community and uh, I like how uh, you said that Aaron's going to be working with each business to come up with a plan. It's nice not to, um, or it's nice to understand that not every business is going to be the same. And that's one thing uh, you guys are really uh, knowledgeable about is you know that uh, this business over here that has 15 people isn't going to need the same thing that this business that has 50 people is going to need. Absolutely. It will be tailored to, to the business and that's what's important. And, and that's something we've lacked. Um, we haven't really done in many, many years that we want to be a part of again. Yeah. And I know um, one thing that you guys uh, at Woodlawn are really proud of, and I'm grateful that we have something like this, and I, I always like to talk on it when we get a chance, is the swing bed program. Yes. Um, patients that need an extended stay uh, could come into our facility, uh, receive that extended stay, get therapy, provide uh, nursing service, good coverage, actually better coverage than you would find in a nursing home because again, they're receiving basically hospital level care. And we're reaching out to our partners at uh, Fort Wayne Orthopedics, working with those, which are those patients that are from Rochester that happen to get surgery somewhere else, to come back here and to rehabilitate in our swing bed program. Yeah. Yeah, we have an exceptional group of therapists, nursing staff, and um, for a, a family member, you know, if it were my family member, I think the option of having someone come to get their care in the hospital, get that additional rehab need, get that additional you know, tune up, if you will, before they're able to safely go home, boy, that provides a level of security for me and peace of mind because the hospital has the physicians on site, the imaging mm -hmm. stuff on site, the laboratory on site. If something were to uh, um, happen, everything's there to take care of them right where they're at yeah so and um, as we continue to talk about Woodlawn growing uh, you guys are doing some construction over at Woodlawn yeah Shaver Medical Center um, you know we're, we're moving forward on the north end of that uh, just plugging right along so that we can move Fulton County Medical Clinic uh, from the downtown location back to the campus there um, we're still on track um, to finish at the end of the year um, our goal is to get in there early first quarter if possible um, and, and uh, get that service up and running at that location. So that's going well. And now, um, if you don't mind me asking, when this is all said and done, that will uh, that'll help those numbers uh, become more of a positive thing because you won't have some of the expenses that you have now. Correct. Uh, we'll be able to consolidate services. And again, doing that, we're not eliminating people, but we're consolidating. So to do that, yes, you inherently save money, plus the proximity now for all of our clinics uh, up in, from downtown moving it to a centralized location is to the hospital where, again, they can receive direct services without uh, a far drive. That's kind of nice. Convenient. You know, if uh, you're seeing the doctor and they say, hey, you know, we need to get some blood work done real quick, you can just walk across the parking lot right. and get the blood work done. Exactly, or any other service. And again, it's convenience for the patient because we're here for them. We're here for the patients. We're here for the community. And, and one thing that we haven't talked on in uh, a couple months um, that just kind of popped into my head real quick, what is uh, visitation looking like uh, for you guys, your visitor policy right now? Well, we're back to normal for the most part. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, nice. I mean, the, the rule is still the same general, of thumb, uh, general rule of thumb, which is, you know, if, if you're ill or having any symptoms, don't come um, to visit. But uh, otherwise, you come in and there's a, a um, kiosk, so to speak, right there where you can get your mask and and uh, you can sanitize your hands and, and uh, go on into the hospital. Um, we're not limiting that right now. Um, we'll let you know if that changes and we'll get you guys a, a message out. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, we're, we're, we're open. We're open for business. Yes. All right. I know uh, that seems to help. A lot because a lot of times I know I've I've talked to a couple people personally who are like, well, I thought about going, but I was afraid that you know they'd make me stay, and then I couldn't see anybody. You're only one person, and I I just I don't want to do that. And I'm like, sure, do it anyway. 
Yeah, I mean, we're, we're back open even, you know, in our cafeteria. We now have community members yeah, coming in right. again and eating. Um, we're opening up our, um, our meeting rooms again to community um, events and such. So we're, we're open for business. We only ask that you wear a mask when you come in. Right, right. And I think that's still a smart choice anyway. So mm -hmm. uh, I'm right on board with you there on that one. Yeah. Um, anything else you guys want to touch on while well, I've got you right here? Well, I know Brad wants to talk about our four-star rating that we we have. Again, being the only four-star uh, facility in a wow, greater than a 25-mile radius. Yeah, we're at 50 miles roughly. 50. There you go. Yeah, yeah, that's just something we're always excited about, and you know, I'll probably harp on it to the to the point where everybody will think it's the same song, but it's important to us because we maintain that through our quality measures, through the things we're doing for patient safety, and and all the advances we've been doing over the last several years at the hospital, and so kind of. In addition to that, just wanted to note a couple things going on within some of the departments that really push us towards that four-star rating. Um, both our OB department and our oncology departments are doing a new integration of some um, software to improve patient safety and improve the medical record. Um, very exciting, a fetal monitoring system in OB and a new EHR component in our oncology area. And then um, the ED department. You know, we've talked about our chest pain certification and how proud we are of it. This is just another example of how proud we are and um, how well we're doing. Our ED has now met a, um, a keystone or a milestone of 100% of the time that they are getting EKGs completed for chest pain patients within 10 minutes. So we are exceeding the national standard now for how quickly, if you come in with complaints of chest pain, are you getting your EKG completed? That's great. Um, less than 10 minutes now, and we've gotten that now 100% of the time. So um, we're so happy about that because that's just another way we're improving our quality of care for the community. In addition to that, we're keeping more patients at home rather than shipping them. And that's important. Yeah. We want to keep folks close to home. Yeah, absolutely. And improve our, our level of service. Okay. Very, very exciting. Yes, absolutely. And it's uh, uh, great to hear that uh, you continue to maintain that four-star rating. and. Uh, I'm sure you'll get it again next year. Absolutely, that's our goal. That's our goal. That's our goal. Yes. All right, well, gentlemen, uh, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedules to stop by and talk with us for a little bit. We greatly appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you again in a month. Very good. Thank you so very much thank for having you us. Thank you. Yeah.